Today, we shall discuss the passage of the last chapter in this series, which is Alternating Current Circuit. We start with the summary of the first few topics, which is the AC current through a pure resistor, pure inductor, and the pure capacitor. So the first thing is about the resistance or the reactance for the inductor and the capacitor. And then you also learn about the first difference between the V and I for these three components separately. For the resistor, they are in phase. For pure inductor, V is the one leading the current. And for the pure capacitor, V is lagging behind the current. And then there's also one key thing about these three components is about the mean power. So the mean power is zero for the case of inductor or the capacitor. And then you also learn about the phasor diagram that you should, you should do practice on your own. And then uh, you also need to remember the, about the concept of the root mean square. So the root mean square is the equivalent DC value of the voltage or the current okay, compared to the AC voltage or the current. So let's go through the passive question. First is from 2022, question 14. A sinusoidal voltage is applied across a resistor. Which statement is true about the relationship between the voltage and current of the resistor? So this is quite simple because we know they are in phase. So answer, we see that when the voltage increase, the current increase. When the voltage decrease, the current also decrease. That's the relationship between the voltage and the current for the resistor. We move on to the next question. Which graph shows the variation of the reactance of a capacitor with the frequency when an alternating voltage is applied across the capacitor? So this is quite simple. We have the formula of the reactance is 1 over 2 pi Fc. So the reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency. Answer will be D. We move on to the next question. A pure inductor is connected to an alternating supply. Root mean square voltage of the supply is V and the root mean square current of the circuit is I. Which statement is true about the inductor? So answer will be A, that we have the mean power dissipation is zero and the voltage is leading the current by pi over two radian. And then we shall move on to the next question. An alternating voltage supply to a capacitor of capacitor 200 microfarad is given here. Which equation represents the current that flows through the capacitor? So here we can use the formula of I is equal to C dBdt, dt, where you learn this in part of the derivations. So we have the capacitor 200 microfarad, and we're going to di differentiate the equations of the voltage. And the final current is 0 0.3 cos 300T. Answer is D. And then we move on to question in 2023. A resistor of resistance 100 ohm is connected in series to a sinusoidal voltage supply. What is the average power dissipated in the resistor? So we want to find out the average power dissipation where P is equal to V squared over R. So we need to use VRMS to have an average or the mean power dissipation. So this is one key thing in this question. So the formula here, V is equal to 220 sine 100 pi T. The 220 here is the peak voltage. So we need to convert this voltage to root mean square voltage first. And then you apply the formula and you can obtain the average power is 242 watt. Answer is C. And then you shall move on to the last topic, which is the RC, RL or RFC circuit. So here is the summary of all the formulas that we have learned. So in simple, the voltage and current are no longer in phase. So there's a special formula needed to calculate the voltage or the impedance. So I will leave this for you to do your own revision and let's go to the last question. A bulb which is labeled as 110 watt, 55 watt is connected in series with an inductor. And a sinusoidal voltage supply of 200 watt, which is the root mean square with frequency of 50 hertz. What is the self-inductance of the inductor so that the bulb glows with the normal brightness? So you should have seen this rating before in SPM that the bulb should be connected to 110 watt to have a normal brightness. So refer this circuit, bulb will be the resistor and should be 110 volt. So to obtain the self-inductance of the inductor, which is uh, in the XL, so we can try to find the voltage or the current to obtain the self-inductance. So the current is simple, then we can apply power is equal to VI and we have the current is 0.5 ampere. And for the voltage of the inductor, remember you need to use this formula, you cannot just direct minus the 200 volt 220 volt with the 110 volt. Okay, so you need to apply this formula to obtain the voltage across the inductor, which is 190.53 volt. And then you can apply the formula of V is equal to IX, and we have the frequency 50 hertz, and this is where we can get the self-inductance of the inductor, 
which is equal to 1.2 Henry. And then I'll show you another method which is much faster. So first we can get the resistance first, okay? The resistance of the bulb, which is using the formula P is equal to V squared over R. So the resistance is 220 ohm. And then we can apply the simultaneous equation where we can use the V equal to IZ and also the equation at the bulb, VR equal to IR. So here the impedance is equal to the square of R square plus the reactance square. So here is where we can get the self-inductance of the inductor. So you can try these formulas and you should get the same answer that it is equal to 1.2 Henry. So answer is C. So that's all for the partial discussion for the section A of 222, Ulanga paper and 223. So good luck for your exam and thank you.